I've been packing like nonstop for the last three days, so we're not gonna uh, talk about what's going on here. But yeah, so as you noticed, I have cut my hair though. I've been letting my blonde hair grow out. So anyways, hi. It has been so long and I feel like I don't even like know how to do this anymore. As much as I missed YouTube, it's actually been like a really much needed break. That's a whole other story for another day. Today we're actually gonna do several things. We're going to do a, an updated shelf tour. Wow, I can't talk. I told you I'm super out of practice. Not that I ever could talk eloquently, but anyways, today we're gonna do several things. We're gonna do shelf tour, an updated shelf tour. The only one that I have is a couple years old when I first got my shelves and I wanted to, I did like rainbow shelves and then I wasn't really happy with it. So I didn't do a shelf tour until I, after I had decided to um, do away with rainbow shelves. And then that's kind of what that video was all about. Then we're also going to talk about the books that I have read and books that I have not read. This is also gonna be an unhaul video and like a packing, moving slash TBR video for the next six months to a year. Because you probably could tell from the thumbnail I don't actually have a thumbnail planned out in my head right at this moment. I don't even know what I'm going to title this video, but we bought a house. It all happened quite suddenly because we were just kind of sort of going to look around. It kind of turned into this urgency that like we need to do this now. So I think we're still recovering from the shock of, oh, we're moving in a few months. And with that comes a whole new bucket of fun trying to pack our lives away again and all the, all the things. So it's a new build. We have to wait for it to be built. They said six to 10 months. And I think that our house is going to sell very shortly. Um, so we're gonna have to move into like an apartment. We really, we're really trying to save money on rental costs in between. We're probably gonna be going into a, quite a small space. So we don't, I don't want to have to bring a lot of things. Because, so that's one big decision going into how I'm going to be packing up my books. So I thought I would just include you guys on this process as a little bit of a comeback. So first on the agenda is we're going to do the shelf tour as it is. Um, I'm going to do, it's going to be pretty brief and I'm just going to kind of show you how it's all organized. So let's go ahead and do that now. Oh, sorry. I should have picked that up. That's my cats. These are kind of books that I had set out that I was going to maybe try to tackle this Halloween season. Now I'm gonna have to rethink that because I know I'm not gonna have the time with moving. The basket over here, so a couple of journals and some of these, my Mickey ears. And a couple of books. This basket, these are kind of more like what my husband and my son enjoy. We have some Magic the Gathering, our Star Wars books, Michael Crichton. Here we have just a display shelf for some graphic novels, obviously. More graphic novels and coloring books. And then a couple of series over here. I didn't really, I kind of like ran out of room on other shelves and, uh, yeah, overflow shelf, I guess. <laughs> Here is my Shadowhunter series, uh, Rick Riordan books, and there's some Brandon Mole back here. Underneath that are high fantasy books. On the top shelf is where I keep books that I don't need access to readily because I literally have to get a step stool to get up there. Uh, this is kind of young adult vampire fantasy books it's obviously my twilight shelf my harry potter shelf back over here on this side we have like young adult 
contemporary books, romance. There's there's some others mixed in there too, like Dark Matter and The Wife Upstairs. Uh, they really just, the colors went there. I guess we'll go ahead and go over here. These are more centered around books about witches. Again, there's like some other mixed stuff in there. There's like a Cleopatra retelling. Recently, like these two, like these two on top are kind of overflow and they don't really work in this space because they're longer than the paperbacks. So yeah, <laughs> we're gonna take care of that today. This is my tall hardback books. As you can tell, they're quite mixed genres. Okay, we're gonna go back over here to the main shelf. These, I don't really know what to classify them as. Whoops, I was. Um, so as you can see, we got some double stacking here. Um, I, I don't really know what to consider this. These are kind of books about people and places. Um, this one actually on the front is kind of more of a travel moving down is my Lee Bardugo and Sarah J Mass books. Moving down is dystopian science fiction books. Okay, back over here. These are like thrillers, mostly thrillers, legal lit, mystery. Over here is more like, is like young adult fantasy, but I really tried to keep retellings on this shelf. Next over, this continues on with like science fiction and dystopian. Some of these are pulled out because I was <laughs> thinking. Okay. This is kind of mixed. They're kind of getting into uh, memoirs, biographies, books like kind of about people. Of course, there's atonement that doesn't exactly fit. Um, over here, my poetry collection. And then further down, these are more like history, biographies, memoirs again. And on the very bottom shelf, I totally, I totally didn't do this right. This is kind of an overflow shelf. We've got some more history books, some Cliff Notes books, romances, paperbacks. I always generally put a lot of paperbacks along the bottom because I think that they're kind of like, they look, they look bad pretty quickly. Um, so I kind of hide them on the bottom. Okay, we're gonna go back up here under under this one. These are kind of more retellings, but they're more like retellings about classics. Uh, and then under that starts my classics collection. And then on the bottom shelf, we've got quite a mix more paperbacks that are kind of like fantasy okay we're gonna go back up here under the shelf high fantasy young adult fantasy this one's totally in the wrong spot uh midnight of garden of good <laughs> midnight in the garden of good and evil that really doesn't go here as far as genres go but it fit under that we have another classic shelf under that we've got like horror and vampire books Karen Marie Moaning she, this is actually a face a fairy series it's like an adult fairy romance all right so that was all of those and then on this little bookshelf over here I just have some other books that I had just set out these are kind of mixed but contemporary down here we've got more fantasy kind of a, a mix again we've got some young adult a lot of young adult and fantasy. Then we have this stack of books. And then the very last shelf is like children's classics and children's books. That is the tour. All right, so now I'm gonna start deciding on what to pack. And I kind of have it broken up into about three different kind of sections. So I got several things going on here. First, I need to pack stuff so that we have less to pack right before we move because our realtor thinks our house will once she puts it on the market or um that it'll sell very quickly like in a week that's insane to me the bookshelf like the bookshelves can stay up while we're showing the house i definitely think that it's quite a feature to see everyone's always impressed with my bookshelves like the neighbor came by yesterday 
and I was telling her, oh, I'm a big reader and stuff. And she's, and uh, so I had to show her my shelves and she goes, oh, wow, it's so pretty. Um, so it's quite a feature, but I also like, like I wanted to like find a balance. I want to clean it up so it kind of looks like, I think it needs to be more decorative looking, but not sparse. Kind of like, you know, like if you go into like a model home, like it looks staged, like kind of staged, but also like it's homey. So there's that. And then we've got some issues that can definitely be cleaned up that aren't very nice, like the double stacking of books and a lot of the paperbacks that aren't as pretty. The first thing I'm gonna pack up are books that I have already read. Now, the funny thing about this is there was like a um, tag going around a while ago where you basically talk about all the books that you have not read yet on your shelves. And I didn't wanna do it because it's quite shameful that I have quite a lot of unread books on my shelves. But here we are now. I guess it's as good a time as any to go ahead and address the issue. <laughs> Please keep in mind before you judge. I do a lot of switching around frequently. I get rid of books that I've already read that I don't wanna keep, but then I just find new books to put in their place. Because if you've been around here long enough, I go to a buy sell trade store. So I will take them like a bag of books and they always give me a really good sell back value to spend in the store. So of course I pick out new books. So that's how that goes. That's why there's quite a few books on my shelves that are not read yet. Let's go ahead and do this. They go in the box. Do I pack them in the box with the other series? Or do I leave it out and maybe read them? Am I going to read them though? They're quite heavy and I'd rather stick to smaller books. So, ah, oh, this is really hard. I guess I will not be reading you guys for the foreseeable future. I forget how heavy these boxes get. I'm probably just gonna leave this box open because more can fit in here and I will jam pack them full. And I'll leave those out for now and we'll decide later. All right, next we're gonna do that one. I'm trying to decide, obviously I've read everything on these two shelves, but like they look pretty cool, especially the Harry Potter shelf as we have, you know, Harry Potter and Harry Potter and you know, Florida has the whole Harry Potter world. Despite these being red, I think they will stay because they're decorative. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the camera now and I will check back in with you when we've done this. Oh, this is a second copy. And this is like one of my favorites. I love Six of Crows. I found this at the thrift store, but I haven't found the second one. And I don't know if I care to keep two copies, even if it's a beautiful hardcover edition. I don't know, I don't know, especially when I don't have the other one. And the reason I say that is because I have all of them on paperback. So I already have like matching set. I think I'm gonna get rid of it, I don't know. This is another one we're gonna talk about. I don't know if I should keep this one. It was like one of the worst books ever. Maybe I should. I have a lot of notes in here, obviously. I forgot I even annotated it. Okay, I think I have to keep that one. Okay, I've moved. I moved ones that we're gonna talk about later right here. Um, I messed up this shelf. I actually hadn't read and I had already packed it up, but my son had read them. And I think they're gonna be more for my kid anyways, versus me. I just don't know if, I think I'm too old to enjoy them. Time for these. I haven't read this one, but like, am I gonna read it right now? I mean, I could but it's also really big. And it's kind of another thing is I think I'm going to pack away the heavy books. Yeah, it's gonna go in there as well. 
By the way, book two is coming out, what, they said February next year? It seems like so long, but we just get, we just, did you see the new cover? I'm really excited. There you go. I'm on Air of Fire of the series right now. It's gonna take me a while to get through it. I have to read, I wanna read this one too. I started it. I don't necessarily wanna carry these with me. They're so big, but also I'm worried if I pack them away, I'm gonna be very sad because they don't come in audiobook either. It's not like I could get them on audiobook. So I might have to take these. And I'm actually still missing Queen of Shadows. So I'm gonna have to order that one. But like maybe after I read Queen of Shadows or maybe after I read Air of Fire, I'll just take a break from the series. But like sometimes the way Sarah J Mass finishes her books, you're like, I must have the next one in the series. I don't know what to do. Okay, well that shelf is basically cleared. Here's a, another situation where I have a hardbound copy of Throne of Glass and I have the paperback. So I think I'll leave these out for show, but I think I'm gonna end up unhauling them. Our new house, I don't know how the bookshelves are gonna fit. It's definitely a different space. Um, so I might be like moving things around or even getting rid of a shelf, if that's possible. We'll see. All right, let's go ahead and do a check-in. All but the two shelves up there, I have removed everything that I've read. Oh, also we're not talking about those just yet either. So I've removed everything I've read almost because as I'm putting things in boxes, like you kind of want things to stick together, right? So I'm having some issues with series. So inadvertently, this is also going to be series that I have not finished yet. So I have the last hour's books here. I think I have made up my mind. I am gonna go ahead and include those in the box. It's just really hard. Or I could just have a box for just the unfinished books of a series. And then if I wanna pick from it, I'm gonna label them and I'll know exactly where they are. I might do that. I'll feel better about the organization not being perfect if I do that. Yeah, okay. So we have the Scythe series. I've read Scythe, but I haven't read these two. I don't know what my problem is. I know I'm gonna love them. I loved Scythe, otherwise I wouldn't have got the other books. Um, then we have Mistborn. And now that I'm like holding the book and flipping through it, I'm like, I wanna reread this right now. And it's small, like I could. Well of Ascension, but I have not read Hero of Ages. And then I've read Illuminae, but I have not read Gemini, sorry, Gemina, Gemina or Obsidio. This is another one I feel like would be a really good series while things are kind of chaotic right now with moving because you can kind of pick it up and put it down quickly. Like you won't, you don't have to like have a good 30 minutes to like get back into the rhythm of the story and stuff like that as you're reading. We might keep those out. So we're gonna keep this shelf. This is a really nice looking shelf anyways for showing. So I don't have to make a decision on that just yet. So I think the next thing, I'm actually running out of boxes too. These are kind of filled. You can see what I haven't read yet. We'll do that. For shame, all the books that I have not read yet. Also, to be fair, some of these down here are like reference material. Okay, so let's not dwell on that too much. The next thing we're gonna do, I think, is I'm just gonna go ahead and get the books that I know without a doubt I will not be reading in the foreseeable future. Oh, I forgot a book on that list couple of books actually that a lot of the hardbacks even if I'm like oh I want to read it I'm it just for the simple fact that it's like a big heavy hardback I'm probably gonna pack it away the big chunky fat books those are going okay so I'll, I'll check back with you oh yeah, yeah yeah I know what the next thing is the next thing is books is children of blood and bone while this book is beautiful, I really enjoyed reading this book. There was a character in here that drove me up the wall. Actually, it's the main character. Uh, she has this attitude that's very, I don't know if it's like 
dramatic is the right word, but like something about her personality just drives me at the wall and I find it, it's um, any other book where there's a character that kind of has that same mentality, I don't tend to like. I feel kind of sad that I'm gonna get rid of this book, but you know, here's another book that is just beautiful. I really loved the first half of this book. I'm hold why am I holding on to this book? I'm probably not gonna read it again, but like the cover is absolutely stunning. So anyways, I think I'm gonna unhaul that book. Here's another one, The Henna Artist. I ended up listening to this on audiobook. Oh, there is a sequel to this book, making it a series. It was really good. I just don't see myself reading it again. I'm glad that I read it, but like, I don't have room to just hold on to every single book because it was good either. This one's a really challenging book to decide whether or not to get rid of. I can't, I already know I can't read it again just because it's so heart-wrenchingly sad. I, this, I've never cried so hard from reading a book than this book. But there's a part of this book that is just, it really reminded me of my grandma. And if you know, my grandma passed away a little over a year ago. And, um... I don't know, I just, it kind of reminded me of her in a way. And there's parts of this book that are just really fun because it's about like the artist community. And, um, but like, again, I think I'm gonna have to get rid of it. Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda, such a good book. Mm, I don't know. Um, Let It Snow, I might, <sighs> this one's another one that's really challenging if I should get rid of because like it's like three short stories and I could, I actually could see myself reading it again. I don't have, this is the most Christmassy book I think I've ever read. Would I read this book again? I don't know. I'm gonna hold this, hold off on that one. The Girl I Used to Know, I, this is like, was it the first arc I got? This is one of the first arcs that I had ever received. So much good stuff about this book. Again, I just don't know if I'm gonna keep it. This one is a hefty book. I started reading this book, it has a really interesting concept. However, I think it's just a little too, it's a little too much. I just think I've lost interest in it. I don't see myself reading it. Again, it's another arc. I'm probably never gonna read this book. This one's really challenging because this is an arc. I really wanted to love this book. Um, parts of it are really like dark academia, um, but it's kind of funky and I kept skipping around in this book trying to find something I liked about this book. And while some parts of the writing were very like lyrical, I really loved it. Other parts were just like, are you stupid? Um, <laughs> really strange and odd. And so I'm really torn on this one. Also, I had I have a lot of annotations in this book, making it just kind of like fun to reread what I was thinking. And maybe I really should like actually read it with a different perspective going into it because I do think that while at the time of reading it, it was kind of frustrating. Retrospectively, I feel like I, I, did, I wasn't reading it with the right mindset maybe. So my, my, my opinion on this book might change. So I think I, think I have to keep it. This one I think I'm keeping mostly because of the cover. So I might end up having to get rid of it. Um, I loved the beginning of it. I loved the main character's uh, witty talk at the very beginning, but it was not consistent as the book progressed. She lost a lot of the parts that I loved about her character. And I feel like halfway through I already knew it. Like I just didn't really enjoy the book, but I love love this retro looking cover. I'm gonna probably have to get rid of that one. Again, I think I'm gonna have to get rid of that one. School of Fear, this is like a middle grade book. It's so cute. I kind of wanna push my kids to read it, but I just, it seems like everything I see that I think my kids would like, they like don't wanna have anything to do with it. It's really, really cute though. And it's so clever. I was surprised, like this book had a cleverness that a lot of adult books don't even have of the way they twisted the ending. I really loved it. I just finished this book. It had its funny moments, um, but other, most of, most of it, I wasn't super impressed with. I do have like three other books by say, David Sedaris. So they're probably gonna be a little bit different. This one I'm gonna be getting rid of. 
This one I was not impressed with. That's gonna be an unhauled. Also, tail is all this time. I'm finding that I'm not really liking these Twisted Tales book. This this was probably the first one I read of this of the Twisted Tales. And then since then I've read two others and I'm just they don't ever really stick. They're kind of, so I'm kind of feeling like they're a waste of my time. Julian Flynn. I think I should just get rid of them because I don't need to be carting them around. I don't think I'm going to read them again. Parts of these books were I loved Gone Girl so much. <laughs> now I'm not sure I like it as much. It, it was a page turner for sure. These kind of lacked in the page turneriness. The dark places was really slow and kind of dragged on. Sharp objects. I, the last books on the unhaul pile, the family upstairs. I think I'm going to go ahead and unhaul this. I wanted to like just see if I was going to like it. So I checked out the audiobook of this. It was pretty good. It turns out it's kind of like about a cult. I don't know, something about it just didn't capture my attention. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. Fallen, this was a challenging one because the book is definitely not as good as the movie. I really love the idea of it and concept of this book. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna reread it though. And they do have the audiobook available. So if I ever wanted to reread it, I'd probably just listen to the audiobook. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and unhaul that. Another series that I originally listened to on audiobook and I hated it. I was going to read the physical books just to uh, pick them apart and analyze what exactly it was that was so terrible about them. So I have the first two, Hush Hush and Crescendo, but like I think I could do a lot better with my time than rereading a series that I hate. The buy, sell, trade bookstore that I go to, they seem to like really be in need of young adult fantasy um, or just young adult books. They had a really small section when I first started going there. I have quite a few that I can give them. Another series I am going to unhaul. I first time I read Evermore, the Immortal series by Alison Noel. The first time I read Evermore, I really liked it. I remember really, really liking it. I mean, despite being kind of um, juvenile. So I checked out the audiobook really the other day. Was I high? Because this did not feel like the same book that I had read the first time around. It felt so, oh my God, it was so annoying. The main character is, the, the love story was just so insta-love. Like every single, trope but like not even done well the only thing I really liked was that she was other than Edward she's one of the only characters that have like psychic abilities who can read people's minds and that's a characteristic that I really like and if I'm not mistaken I the second time around I didn't even make it that far I decided to go ahead and DNF the book um but I do believe it comes out that the love interest can also read minds where is it there's two other series I just don't know whether or not to keep or give away. I think I am going to test them out to help determine. We have Witch and Curse. I finally looked up reviews on Goodreads. They are not getting good reviews at all. I try really hard not to let that influence my decision, but I'm probably going to be the same conclusion just um so most likely these are going to end up getting unhauled i tried just to see if they had an audiobook but they didn't and the same goes with the night world series is this the first one this is number two i have the first three volumes each of them have three stories ever a lot of people when i first talked about this on my channel a lot of people came back and said it was a really good series but lj smith also writes Vampire uh, Vampire Diaries, I could not get into Vampire Diaries at all. So if it's anything like Vampire Diaries, I might as well just get rid of them right now. But I'm going to go ahead and test them out and we'll decide. And that is it for now. I think I am going to take a little break. Um, yeah, I'll check back when I pack away a lot more. Talk about which ones I'm going to keep out, things like that. All right, it is Saturday and kids are home, so that's what all the noise is about. So here's what I've left out so far over here. 
So a huge portion is gone, but there still looks to me like there's still a lot of books. All right, so there's been some change of plans. Um, we are thinking that we're probably not gonna put our stuff in storage. The prices on renting like a house to an apartment are pretty comparable. So if we get like a house with a garage, we'll just be storing everything in the garage. So I might not be completely isolated from my books. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing is having like one to two boxes that I pack that are like maybe, you know, that I wanna keep out. So that being said, you saw what the end result is, everything packed away as much as possible. This is like for show. There's a lot on this list, probably too much, but you know, let's just get into it. Okay, well, I guess the best place to start right now is books I'm currently reading. However, I think I'm going to be checking out the audiobook. I have been kind of not enjoying this series that much, but I definitely want to finish it. So that one is The Queen of the Damned by Anne Rice, plus it is a nice little um, Air of Fire, which I really haven't had time to read it, like read the physical book as of late. So I've been reading a lot of it um, on my ebook. That's okay. So I'm reading Air Fire and then Assassin's Blade. Uh, and then there is House of Leaves. Still really want to read this one this month. I think when I'm done with Air of Fire, I might hyper focus on this one. We'll see. And then there's Frankenstein. I really wanted to get to this one this month. The next set of books I'm gonna show you are ones that after I read them, I plan on getting rid of them. I can keep them out and then just like get rid of them. I won't have to move them when I'm done reading them. One of them is Savage Grace. I think it's supposed to be like a psychological thriller with a bunch of drama and like unlikable people. This other one is called Keeping the House Quite Opposite. It's about a woman in the 40s, I wanna say, 1950, Wisconsin and she is a housewife and she really struggles with that. It's a lot of commentary on that, which I kind of, see as how I'm the stay-at-home mom, I could probably really relate to that character. I'm not sure, we'll see. And then this one is Someone Knows My Name. This one's supposed to be really heartfelt. It's about a girl who's kidnapped from Africa and enslaved in South Carolina. It's a winner of the Commonwealth Prize. It's just, it sounds really, really good, but also pretty heavy and touching. Um, and then the next one is a book by Nicole Ritchie called Priceless. I'm just kind of really intrigued by it. Then I have The Wife Between Us and The Wife Upstairs. I just personally have not had a lot of luck with thrillers. Anytime that I read like thriller type books, either I don't really care for them, so I'm definitely not gonna keep them. And two, once I read them, I don't really need to keep them. So I tend to just get rid of them. These are some other ones I'm really just not sure I'm gonna like. They're the young adult category, which I'm slowly finding out. Some are still very relatable, some that I can still really, really get into, but it's getting more hard pressed to find those within the young adult um, classification. Dark Star, which is kind of like a superhero thing. And then The Awakening of the Sunshine Girl. I forgot what this is about. This I believe is actually pretty, um, supposed to be kind of haunting, which might be really good for this spooky season. Uh, and then there is Gone, which I believe is like science fiction. No phones, no internet, no TV, and no way to get help. These teens are like the only ones left alive and stuff like that, so. Unbreakable by Cami Garcia. This is definitely the first in the series, but I'm just really not even sure I'm gonna like it but it's a like suspense thriller kind of thing as well. I'm probably absolutely insane for even thinking this, but I picked three real big books and that is 1Q84 and Bleak House at the Company of the Dead. And then I also have Lady of the Ashes that I'm gonna leave out. This one is probably another one that's really good for the spooky season. Uh, I believe it takes place. Oh, Undertaker in Victorian London. Like, do you need more? Not really. Whenever it's this time of year, I always want to pick that book up and I just never do. All right. Next is a few for my classic shelf. I know that those usually take me a lot of time and a lot of brain power to get into. And I know that I'm probably not going to be able to really get into those as we're kind of stressed in the in between. But I still want to put some on the list and because they're really highly on my radar right now. I just really want to like sit down and read them right now if I wasn't reading other things. Uh, so I've got Of Human Bondage. These are all, these are also all um, like smaller paperbacks, a little bit beat up. So if they get damaged, 
while we're moving. Not a big deal, they're already quite damaged, especially this next one, which is House of Spirits by Isabel Allende. Little bit of magical realism going on there. Flowers for Algernon. Al Algernon. Flowers for Algernon. I don't know why I cannot say that word. And then we have The Trial by Kof Franz Kafka and Othello by Shakespeare. Some other books, they were just paperbacks, um, easy to travel with. First two in the Wicked series. I actually have the trade paperbacks size of these as well. But for whatever reason, I just really like these because of the sprayed edges. So yeah, um, but yeah, the Wicked series by Gregory Maguire, Anne Rice's The Witching Hour, and Tale of the Body Thief, which is the fourth book in the Vampire Chronicles. Some of these other standalones are The Sacrifice. Um, I believe this is like a real spooky and then we have an R.L. Stein, an R.L. Stein Dangerous Girls book, and Don Pierre, which is the beginning of another series, but it's kind of like a Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets, what did they say? Oh, here we go. Lord of the Rings and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And then I have the first book in the Succubus Blues series. This actually could go with the first category of books that I'm kind of want to test out to see if I even like. So I'm like really, I'm like trying to do this really fast because I got a lot to go through. All right, I have another couple of big books here. Um, the Starless Sea and Strange the Dreamer. This one's quite a big book, but I definitely really want to read these. I think those are more kind of like beginning of the year and spring kind of feel books. Yeah, I'm thinking that far ahead. <laughs> these two I think I'm going to be leaving out. They are books about books. These, are, these two I'm kind of on the fence about. There is the Museum of Extraordinary Things. I remember picking this I picked this up um, when I first got it and like read the first chapter and at the time I kind of had a hard time getting into it. Let's see and then we have The Witch of Portobello. I wanted to kind of read this again for like the spooky season. I have a lot of books about witches and I want to read them all right now. Of course it's not going to happen but I like want to. I really love having a short story collection or essay collection. Another David Sedaris. The other one I have is really chunky so I thought I would leave this one out. This one's really short. It's called Shining in the Dark. This is more of like scary, dark, spooky tales. The Shell Collector, I have actually already read about half of this book. It'd be nice to maybe finish it. This one's kind of tough. I might end up packing it away just because I don't want it to get damaged because I got this book at the Hemingway house, but here you can see my little, my little stamp, my little sticker. And it's actually like, there's a raised like stamp here that I got it at the Hemingway house in Key West this summer. So I'm just, I'm really afraid it's gonna get damaged if I leave it out. So I think I might end up packing that one away actually. Tales of the City by Armistead Mopin. I really don't know how to say that name. Oh, I didn't even realize. So there's a Netflix TV show based off this. I didn't even know. Oh, and then I have Me Talk Pretty One Day by David Sedaris as well. I'm gonna put one of these back. Maybe I'll keep this one because this one's like everyone's go-to David Sedaris book. So yeah. Oh, and then there's this one too, The Tipping Point. Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. Just kidding. As far as short story collections, I'm gonna keep out The Tipping Point. I think this is more essays. The Shining Dark, The Shell Collector, Tales of the City, and Me Talk Pretty One Day. Some other ones I was considering are The Antelope in the Living Room, The Struggles of Being Married and Having Kids and Life and Balancing all those things. So again, I think this is just something that I could personally really relate to. So I think I'm gonna add that one. Pachinko, this is another really big chunky book, but I'm thinking it'd be really good for like winter season. A Man Called Ove, still on the fence about whether I'm gonna keep this one out or not. Here we have this one, The Snowflower and the Secret Fan. Turtles all the way down so I can have like a contemporary. I don't think I've picked any contemporary. Um, so maybe that one, I don't know. We've got Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. These all, these all kind of struck out to me because they're all gonna be, give me a bunch of different variety, but they're paperbacks and they are short. Pearl, I cannot say that word. Girl with the Pearl earring. I have two Kazuo Shiguro books. I don't know if I'm just gonna pick one of the two or both of them, but I have Remains of the Day and A Pale View of Hills. Probably Remains of the Day, because I haven't heard anyone talk about the other one, but everyone talks about this one. So maybe I should prioritize this one first. 
Their Eyes Were Watching God. I actually might end up packing this one because I already started listening to it on audiobook. This is the other one that I really want to read for winter. So this one is a Pulitzer Prize finalist and it's called The Snow Child. Actually, this one needs to probably go in the other pile, A Faithful Place, because Again, it's like a thriller. Once I read it, I'm probably never going to read it again. This is called The House of Broken Angels. I believe this is by Luis Alberto Urea, and he's a Pulitzer Prize finalist for one of his other works. Oh, I know why. So it's, it's about a Hispanic family, Mexican family, who lives in San Diego, I believe. And there's a lot, which this is really is like, I grew up in San Diego. That's why I really wanted to read this book. Another short story collection by um, Chekhov, um, Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. This is just a really small little book. And then we've got Carmelo, so another story about a uh, Mexican family. Invisible Monsters by Chuck Palahniuk. Neverwhere by Neil Gaim Gaiman. I, so reading the synopsis, I think I'm going to love this book. I don't know what's going on with this over here. Neil Gaiman, I haven't, I can't say I've read everything. I haven't read enough of his work. I've read two of his books that were not really my favorite, but they were also like middle grade, I think. The synopsis of this one sounds totally up my alley, like underground, spooky, but I have not heard anyone say anything good about it. So I might end up really not liking it. I mean, I guess that's that's fine. If I don't like it, then I can get rid of it. So I'm gonna keep it out. Here we go. This one is the first book of the Witcher series. I have the game. I started I started playing the game. It's really fun. I know, I know there's a Netflix show, but I don't really watch a lot of TV, so it's really hard for me. Like I want to watch it, but I don't really have time to watch it. But I thought I could read the book. And then we have Mortal Engines. I fell in love with the movie and I'm dying to know if the book is just a good, as good. All right, I have two that I considered doing um, specific like projects for. So I might keep those out. So that is The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway and Catch-22. And also for a different one, Legend by David Gemmell and The Unit. I'm really kind of on the fence about this stack. I think this one is it's gonna be kind of like, if I don't like it, I'll get rid of it. And that is called Forbidden. And I think it's kind of like, a, it's a young adult fantasy again. It could be really amazing or it could really come up short. Psychic visions, creepy warnings, mysterious boy, forbidden love kind of thing. Then we have Darker Still, which is kind of like a, like a picture coming to life kind of thing. And then we have The Peculiars, Ghost Walk, which is um, kind of dark academia, Deadly Education, Midnight in the Garden of Evil. And because I'm reading Frankenstein, I also found this book, Mary Shelley and the Curse of Frankenstein, The Monsters. So basically this takes like the real life of Mary Shelley and how like, I don't know if y'all seen the movie. There's a movie about Mary Shelley's life and it was so, so good. I really loved it. So this seems to be kind of like about her life, but also adding in this other person, Polidori's contribution, the first vampire novel. So they're gonna talk a little bit more about that and then some curse or something like that. So it just, it sounds really good. All right, and then I have Wild Woman in the Blues, kind of a 1920s, Chicago jazz era sort of book. My Husband's Wife, another. And then we have Cloud Atlas, Two Gentlemen of Lebowski. This is supposed to be like a quirky take on a Shakespeare. Oh, okay. So basically one of the blurbs on the back says, what if William Shakespeare wrote The Big Lebowski? So it's supposed to just be like a comedy. It's supposed to be really funny. It's also kind of written like a play. So I think that would be fun. And I think finally, I have decided to go ahead and keep out, whoa, I have decided to go ahead and keep out Gemina and Obsidio, both Vampire Slayer and Psychology. Here's another little um, paperback of 14 Dark Tales, short stories by Stephen King. The only other category I have not decided on yet are what poetry books I'm going to leave out. Um, I do have some other videos on poetry that I plan on doing. So at this time, they're gonna stay out anyways. I would like to go ahead and film those. Probably decide later. Oh, one other one. I was sitting right here in front of my face. Um, Essential Tales and Poems of Edgar Allan Poe. So this is at least one poetry collection, but also there's like short stories in here too, so. And I think that wraps up this video. So thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll see you sooner rather than later and uh, see you later. Bye.